It's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a super glamorous Minnie Mouse cake. Now, this design is nothing new. I've seen it crop up all over Instagram, but I thought I would add my own little spin to it. As usual today, I'm using my Italian meringue buttercream, and you'll notice I am pouring a liquid on top of my cakes. And whenever I have a cake for an order for a friend, I like to make sure that I really moisten each level of cake. So really, all that is is a simple syrup. You might not know when a client is actually going to consume your cake. So this is a great idea so that you ensure that everything stays nice and fresh and you avoid it from going too dry. And don't worry about it amping up the level of sweetness. It actually doesn't sweeten up the cake that much. Nowadays, I've switched up my practices a little bit and anytime I want my cake to have a really nice sharp edge, I leave it in the fridge overnight or for as long as I possibly can. Now, this is dependent upon your refrigerator, but I just find it makes everything so much easier to work with when it's really, really chilled. I like to roll my fondant out fairly thin because I find if I go any thicker, then it starts getting rounded at the top and I want it to be fairly sharp or as sharp as I can make it. I've also seen techniques where they actually cut a circle completely on the top and then they panel the sides. I just find I can never smooth out the sides perfectly, so I usually do it this way. And all I'm really doing is I'm grabbing the fondant and then I'm smoothing it to the side of the cake. And with Italian meringue buttercream, no matter how long it's been chilling, it doesn't form that crust like American buttercream, so you don't need to add anything to it. If you find that it is not adhering to your cake, then just add a little bit of shortening. Cut off the excess and try to get fairly close to your cake so you get a nice clean edge. With all of that excess fondant, you do want to ball it up as soon as you can and make sure that you cover it so that it doesn't dry out. Use a fondant smoother to smooth out all of the imperfections. If you get any air bubbles, use a tiny pin to pop it and then smooth it out with your smoother. In order to make the beaded applique on the front, you could either use a Mickey shaped cookie cutter that you have, but if you don't have that, you can just use one large circle and two smaller circles. Now I am steaming my cake because I find it's so much easier to adhere all of these little pearls here once the cake is steamed. When it isn't steamed, you're dealing with a dry piece of fondant, which makes things pop off really, really easily, or you have to use some other thing to adhere it to the cake. I have a bunch of different sized pearls here, which wasn't really intentional, but I actually like the different kind of tones and textures this has. So what I'm doing is I'm just placing them in order in a pattern. And then when I fill this in, I will place them on more haphazardly. Later on in the video, I am going to share my pricing guide with you. And this portion right here is what really drives up the cost of this cake. These edible pearls are a little bit more specialized if you're looking for a particular look, so they can be more pricey. But regardless of the expense of the supplies, it also takes a considerable amount of time. Just to do this whole portion here, all completely filled in, it took around 30 minutes. I tried my best to kind of clump the pearls together and stick them on that way, but even then you do have to finesse them into place. You could easily achieve something similar to this using a fondant mold and then painting it various shades of gold, but I don't have a fondant mold that can do this, so I just use what I have on hand. And like all of my tutorials, use what you have on hand and do what works for you. If you don't like a particular thing, you can switch it up all on your own. This is all about being creative. When I was working at the professional bakery, we often did this type of design, so I have lots of experience making mini or Mickey standing ears. So the best way to do it, I find, is if you cut two circles for each ear, you stack them on top of each other, and you just adhere it with water. And I didn't even need to add any extra powder or anything. Those will stand up on their own in about five minutes or so. A little tip when you're doing standing things like that that are 2D, make them slightly thicker. The thinner you make them, the harder it is for them to stand up on their own. Now I'm adding on some little cute polka dots and some gold pearls, and you'll notice that I did steam my cake so that everything adheres really, really easily. I don't have to take out my paintbrush or use any other adhesive. This is a great time to cover up any small little imperfections you might have. This cake looks pretty good. I have a few nicks down at the bottom of my cake, so I am going to be using this pearl border to cover that up. My friend bought me this mold a few years ago and I've used it so, so much. It's very versatile and I suggest that if you're just starting out with caking, you invest in some sort of border molds. 
If you don't have any molds yet, but you do want to create a border, we often used inedible ribbon, or you can also use a pearl border. These are really, really easy to find at the dollar store larger sprinkles or fondant rolled balls that you'll have to roll one by one will also do the trick. The possibilities are endless. Now I am going to make the classic mini bow. Now this particular person did send me a picture of what their daughter's outfit would be like on their birthday. So I'm trying to kind of style the bow after that. Bows might look a little bit intimidating, but they all follow the same rule of thumb. When you're doing different styles, you're gonna do different things. So whenever I'm making a mini bow, it's a little bit more cartoony, it's a little bit more fun. So I do fold in that top edge just to give it that kind of rounded vibe. And then I pinch it together at the center and notice how I'm kind of squeezing in those sides there just to give it that really nice rounded look. Now when I'm making the centerpiece, which is going to cover up all of that little gathering portion in the center, I'm kind of folding it like a fan and then I'm going to fold it over the top of this to cover up all of that meeting area. If things aren't adhering together properly as you would like them to, just make sure to add a little bit of water. After giving the cake another good steam, I'm placing the bow directly on. And notice I didn't have to wait for this to dry or anything. The very first Minnie Mouse bow I ever made, I remember waiting, I think 36 hours until I actually used the bow. It is completely unnecessary. That being said, this takes time for you as a decorator to learn what's going to work for you. Sometimes my friend can get away with making things and not having to wait for things to dry at all. And sometimes I can do that, but it doesn't always work for every single person. So trial and error. By the way, I did switch luster dusts halfway through trying to paint that. It was not working with my water activated paint palette, so I had to switch to a more traditional luster dust mixed with a little bit of vodka and it went on a lot, a lot better. I'm really, really missing my TMP gold. I have to order more, I ran out. I added on those tiny little gold sprinkles everywhere as an afterthought and I also added on these little white polka dots which I rolled by hand and flattened. I wanted the cake to have one more wow kind of element, so I'm adding these pop-out stars. I'm using some floral wire here. It is fairly strong. You want the type that is strong, not the type that's gonna flop over because it does need to be able to stand up on its own. And again, just like the Mickey Mouse ears, I'm creating this by making two stars and then kind of sandwiching them together with the wire in between. You also wanna make sure that you give as much support to the fondant as possible, so place the wire fairly high up on the star. and then once they're dry, which took about 10 to 15 minutes, you can go ahead and place them into your cake. If you're really, really nervous about things drying quickly, you can always add Tylos powder, which is fairly inexpensive and it's really, really easy to use. You just mix your fondant with that Tylos. Whenever I'm finished with a cake, I give it a nice steam afterwards. Now let's get into the pricing of this cake. This cake is super glamorous. There's a lot of things going on. So with the beaded applique at the front, as well as all of those standing elements, the bow and the fact that it's covered in fondant means that this is going to cost $220 Canadian. And of course, I would only keep this as a custom order. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now I'm uploading daily so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also be sure to comment, request or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye.